Hello, this is Rob Sarmanian. I am the general manager of Oaksin, and in this video, I will be teaching you how to install a Perkrite drip dispersal system. A few items to review before we get into the good parts of this video. The methods that will be taught are for the most typical Perkrite installations. If you're working on a project that might be a little different from the example shown, please don't hesitate to call or email Oaksin with any questions. Almost all residential Perkrite systems can be installed in one day. Now that doesn't include setting your tanks, excavating the field, or importing sand. Setting tanks and preparing beds will not be covered in this video since it is no different than the skills you already possess as a world-class septic contractor. All right, let's build a Perkrite drip dispersal system. In part one, our focus will be on all of the components inside the pump chamber. Oakson will be supplying the pump, the cool guide mounting mechanism, all your floats, and the valves that connects your pump to the supply line. The contractor will be supplying a length of 6 inch SDR35 with a bell, some inch and a half schedule 40 pipe for your pump supply, 1 inch schedule 40 for the float mast, and some fasteners to tie everything together. Here is your standard residential pump and cool guide mounting mechanism. The cool guide is broken up into two parts. The outer green portion is for your sump. The inner white PVC portion sleeves over your pump. Your first step will be to remove the two set screws and the caps from both sections of your cool guide. Using your PVC primer and glue, Permanently attach the cap back onto the green portion of the cool guide. Glue the outer portion of the cool guide into the bell of the 6 inch SDR35 you provided. Now take two measurements. The first will be from tank bottom to the outlet knockout of your pump chamber. The second will be from tank bottom to just below the top of your riser. Transfer these two measurements to your 6 inch SDR35 using the end cap as your starting point. Cut the pipe straight through at the end measurement. This will establish the length of your pump casing. Then using the first measurement, cut a notch out of the end of your pipe. Tip the pipe upside down and shake out any green shavings that occurred during cutting. Thread the cap onto the pump and feed the cord through the underside of the cap and out of the hole. Sleeve the three inch PVC over the pump and push it up into the cap. Use the screw to affix the cap back into the sleeve. Lower the cool guide down into the pump chamber. Glue a length of inch and a half schedule 40 pipe into the end of your pump. And once it's dry, lower the pump down the cool guide. Install the combination check valve, ball valve union assembly onto your pump supply line. Depending upon how high the riser is on your tank, you can either run the pump supply directly out of the pump chamber knockout or span the supply line near the top of the riser, elbow down and out a cord hole. The four floats will be labeled as follows. Off is the lowest float, dose enable is second, peak enable is third, and the high level alarm is on top. The off and dose enable floats come fixed at 16 and 20 inches respectively. Peak and high level come loose and need to be spaced according to your design plan. Use the supplied zip ties to secure the slack from your floats to the mast. This should prevent your float from getting tangled during normal operation. Here you can see all of the assembled parts in your pump chamber before any water is added to the tank. Lastly, you will need to secure the cool guide and the clip for your float mast to the riser. The type of fastener you will need depends upon if you're using a concrete or plastic type riser. If your pump chamber opening is beveled, you will need to shim the cool guide and float bracket off the side of the riser. In this example, pressure treated blocks were used. In this next section, we will be working with the hydraulic unit. 
You will need 1 inch Schedule 40 for the zone supply and return valves that head to the drip dispersal field. The pump supply connection is inch and a half Schedule 40. There is a gravity return from the hydraulic unit to the inlet of the septic tank that is also inch and a half Schedule 40. And keep in mind that the enclosure that covers the hydraulic unit is 19 inches to finish grade. The ideal location for the hydraulic unit is directly on top of the pump chamber. We try to keep the pump supply line as short as possible from where it exits the tank to the inlet of the hydraulic unit. This example shows an ideal location for the hydraulic unit, a short pump supply line, plenty of pitch for the gravity return, and a riser that will match the finished grade of the insulated valve box. When the riser on the pump chamber is greater than 18 inches, the hydraulic unit will need to be raised off of the tank. This will ensure that the unit is still within arm's reach when accessing it through the valve box at finished grade. The inch and a half gravity return line can go directly into an available knockout on the inlet side of your primary tank or you can install a 4x4x by four by inch and a half T on the building sewer line just before it enters the tank. If your tanks do not have enough riser height to blend with the hydraulic unit enclosure, then you may need to move the unit off to the side. A great way to make it easier for the plumbing connections is to suspend the unit with either blocks or leftover 6 inch pipe. Backfilling with crushed stone around the unit is preferred to allow for drainage. Don't forget to insulate the 1 inch zone supply and return and inch and a half pump supply line before backfilling. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative. Please remember that the examples shown are for the most typical installations. Please call us if you have a unique situation or would like some further explanation. Don't forget to check out our other Perkwright drip dispersal videos. We hope to see you soon.